Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please take your seats at this time as the program will begin momentarily. Validation and verification are important steps in the quality assurance and quality control process of your research. They add to the credibility and transparency of your results, and when done properly, will make publishing your work much easier. In this video, I will discuss some of the checks you can do and steps you can take to increase the validity and verification of your data and analysis. These will differ depending on the type of methods you've used. Let's start with validity. This is about whether your outcomes are true and based on strong evidence. For quantitative research, we revisit the validity staircase. At each of the steps of the validity staircase, there are associated threats to validity we must be mindful of when doing research. For conclusion validity, you have to be mindful that your outcomes of your statistical calculations can be wrong, because there isn't enough statistical power due to the sample size or an unreliable measure that was used. For internal validity, you must ensure you use the correct methods to determine if there's a causal relationship. Ensure you do not violate any underlying assumptions your data must meet before you draw conclusions from your statistical calculations. The adagios, don't confuse causation with correlation and garbage in is garbage out, still apply. For construct validity, validity issues can occur if your construct itself was not thought through properly. If you missed possible interactions between other variables, the methods of testing, etc. Social threat is also an issue you must take into account. When your population, or you the experimenter, unwittingly influence the measurement. Such as people trying to show desired behavior as opposed to being their normal selves. For external validity, make sure you can actually generalize. Is your sample representative enough to generalize? For instance, can you say that a sample of engineering students is representative for all university students? For qualitative research, validity is less easily defined than in quantitative research, but that does not mean you cannot take steps to ensure it. Although results in qualitative research cannot be generalized, this does not mean there are no threats to conclusion validity. Measures you can take to mitigate these threats and increase validity are ensuring that you have a well-trained moderator or an interview to reduce bias. And another way to avoid bias in your results is ensure your sample is ethically recruited and truly representative of the population you are examining, else your result will not be valid. Employ triangulation strategy, allowing research to be done from multiple perspectives. With this, I mean any approach that allows you to look at your research from multiple perspectives, such as multiple moderators or multiple raters of your data. Another way to reduce bias is to involve the respondent using respondent validation. The initial results are presented to the respondent to see if they recognize the results. Finally, the devil's advocate approach can be used in which you establish validity by seeking alternative explanations for your findings and see if you're able to exclude those. In terms of verification, there are also different approaches between quantitative and qualitative research. In quantitative research, verification can have different forms. In design, computational modeling and computerized systems, there are often stringent procedures in place depending on the area you're operating in. This is where the industry verification V-diagram stems from. Similar verification procedures exist for computerized systems and models. When verifying outcomes of statistical analysis, it is important to verify the data, such as checking for outliers, verifying that you've used the methods correctly in measurement and analysis, and that you've carried them out properly. Also verify that you follow procedure in your data analysis and data interpretation, and compare your outcomes to other research as well as your own expectations, and see if there are no inconsistencies in the outcomes. In qualitative research, the process of how you carried out the research and whether you followed the principles of each method correctly forms a large part of the verification process. It requires constant monitoring during the process and not afterwards. Using the inbuilt mechanism of your methods, monitor for and identify and correct errors as you go. Invest in error prevention before even starting the analysis, as also discussed in validation. Most importantly, keep checking for congruence between your research questions, literature, your sample, your data collection strategy and analysis, and above all, keep records. In conclusion, having and adhering to good validation and verification strategies is vital if you want your research to have a real impact. 
Secondly, it is also your moral duty as a researcher to employ these strategies, as they add to the transparency and credibility of your results, and with that, in the long run, of science as a whole.